Hello everybody, nice to have you here. I've been asked a lot of uh, questions about a builder in the past and uh, I've been asked also recently about what their builder is. And uh, I understood that even if it's like a long time on the market already and I'm using it or my team is using it and a lot of people using it, a lot of people still don't know what is it about and even if they hear about it they don't know how to use it they don't know what to do with it uh, so today i want to make a short intro video and yes it will be short because i want to in simple words try to explain what their builder is and especially try to explain it for a usual or magento developer the person who for last 15 years used to extend Magento Core by creating any modules, writing the teams and so on. And that's something new which is came up on the market from Adobe. And uh, so let's have a look together. So if we fall back to uh, official documentation from Adobe, eh, I will read it. It's Adobe Developer App Builder provides a unified third-party extensibility framework for integrating and creating custom experience to extend Adobe solutions. Sounds nice, a lot of buzzwords. So let's have a look what does it really mean. So I prepared some nice uh, diagram trying to show something which you already know about. So we have Adobe Commerce. So App Builder is linked to Adobe Commerce, so it will not much work with Magento out of the box. It's like especially including all like modules which Adobe developed to communicate with the builder, like some with additional features. Um, I never heard about separate license for Adobe, for a builder for Magento because if you buy an uh, Adobe Commerce license, you have a builder included. If you have Magento open source then you don't have a builder and I'm not sure you can pay additionally to use it. Um, but uh, what is nice with it, so a builder, it's a way how you can write the microservices for your Magento instance. It means you're not much connected here to Adobe itself. It's more the concept and the pattern how to extend Magento or Adobe Commerce system. You can use any other microservice environment if you want to. So let's have a look on the standard way of uh, creating modules for Adobe Commerce Magento system. Um, you usually create in the extension which cover the functionality you want to develop or you want to extend. And uh, let's assume that's one big extension and uh, you have models, resource models you can create to have any business logic, to work with a database layer. Uh, you can configure the cron jobs you can extend the core system by using plugin and observers. You have controllers to define the actions or define the uh, define the possibility to front end call any action on the back end. Uh, you have view where you can create your own template files. You can also create your own teams itself, uh, and that's it. Uh, then you have some services usually available for you. Not necessarily you have all of them, but uh, let's say. In standard way, especially talking about Adobe Commerce Cloud, you have uh, MySQL database, you have Redis database, you have uh, MQP, so the message queue framework, you have uh, open search, and you have the file system itself, so where the application is stored and where you also store in your media files, your I don't know PDFs, invoices, and all the other stuff. And then the whole system, they have API layer, which uh, usually used to integrate any third party tools with the system. Uh, which is usually GraphQL and REST. Uh, that's what do you have out of box. And that's what you're usually using when you developing the new extension. So that's a known way of creating new models. So now what the Adobe Builder is. So Adobe Builder, it's just another way to extend the core. You just do it in this like similar approach you made it before. But now you have a builder, which is a bit another text stack, fully another text stack, but it's doing the same and it has the same purpose as usual Magento extensions. Let's have a look at it. So we have a builder, a builder, which is still an extension in our 
world. Uh, it's uh, yeah. So you still can create a models in it. So you still can create a f methods, functions, classes that uh, will do the stuff you want to do. You can still have kind of resource model. So again, the same. Uh, yes, forgot to mention. So the whole uh, builder is JavaScript based applications. So you need to know the JavaScript. It's, you can use Node for that and you can use React. But as standard way to extend in Magento is PHP. Here it's just a JavaScript. You have alarms, which is uh, in our case the cron jobs. Um, like, yeah. We have the front end, which is still in our case knockout.js, HTML, CSS. Here is the same, but just React, Node, uh, HTML plus CSS if you want to. And you can have an actions, which are controllers in Magento world. So more or less, it's all the same as you already know it. Just uh, another terms, another technology. What is missing here? Uh, you can see we don't have plugins and observers, but we have them because if you use Adobe Commerce, you can install the modules, uh, the, na the native uh, Adobe Commerce modules. It's IO events for commerce, and those are more or less replacing those two missing parts here. So they are providing possibility you to subscribe to an event, plugin, observer, and then send a notification in your application, hey, that have been called with those parameters and so on. So it's technical point of view, just the same uh, plugin or observer, which you can listen to. What about services, you will ask? Um, so you have the database here available, which is not MySQL for sure, MySQL much more flexible. In this case, it's uh, key value storage, uh, which is more or less similar to Redis. They're using the Cosmo DB, Cosmos DB. Um, but again, also you're not trying to build Magento outside of Magento. So you're still trying to build some small module. And in most cases, the key value database storage is more than enough for that. You have events, which is in our case is MQP storage. So the message queue, which you can not only publish events called from in Magento itself, you can also publish your own events from uh, your application. And you have file storage li library. So you also have a file system there where you can store files, generate PDFs, save some reports. You can also use the file storage library as the kind of database replacement. Now if you have like a big set of data you want to store, the key value storage can be not enough, then uh, you can use the file storage library for that. Um, and then as an API, you have an actions. So you don't have like a GraphQL or S layer, but you can add it uh, if you just will use the node uh, libraries for that. But in standard, you can always create the, the action, which you can call via the URL or, or from any internal, like another action. Uh, and that's it. So if you will compare them and you will have a look on them, what else have here? Oh, okay, so I had this GraphQL layer here for communication. Uh, but it's just a builder, one more time, and just another way to extend Magento Core. Not more, not less, as minimum for now. I hope it's become a bit more clear what is that. And if you know, know like more deeper how to do it, I can cover it in the next video. If necessary, please let me know, write a comment about this, uh, because there are a bunch of documentation. You can also try it, but if you have any issues, uh, just drop me a message, drop me a comment. I'll try to cover it on next videos. Uh, here I will not talk about technical implementation, how to do it. That's a bit already another story. I just wanted to share the architectural point of view and understanding. And just to give you the shot, uh, like to make the understanding a bit easier, let me show one of the use cases that maybe will be uh, interesting for you to see that one of my old presentation from Meet Magento New York I made last year. Uh, so one of the use cases I brought there, it was uh, invoice generation. Uh, we have several projects where we need to generate invoices. And if you know the Magento invoices are quite bad. Uh, and there are sort of party modules available when you can install and they allow you to replace the layout, position the elements on the page and all this stuff. 
So it looks quite nice. Also, we found out that they're usually quite heavy, especially they mostly work in a synchronous way. So if you suddenly will configure your invoice being generated when the order being placed in synchronous mode, your system checkout will become very slow. So what instead you can do, you can like build this module and delegate it to a builder itself. So you can build it with JavaScript. You can create an APIs for that and you can uh, Every time when the new order been placed in Magento and Adobe Commerce system, send a notification to your builder application with order ID uh, and tell, hey, generate main invoice. The application will like receive it, so it will read it from Adobe I.O. events uh, by using the journaling API. If interesting, I'll talk about this, what is that? But in general, so read it from the queue, from the message queue. Uh, and then generate invoice. So you just do it with JavaScript, saving into to the file storage. You can also save some metadata to key value storage for your invoice if necessary. Uh, and that's it. And then provide, let's say, the link back. Or just you can always know how to access this from, a, a, uh, from Adobe Camera System by the direct link. So that's, that's a simple use case I wanted to show you. Yes, that's it. If you're talking about a builder basics or a builder basic understanding on what is it about. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I will be happy to answer them. And now we will play the small game. <laughs> I really want that you participate in it, especially if you're new in a builder, you want to understand if you need to use it, when to need to use it. Um, drop me the modules you have to build, you built before, are already available on GitHub, Marketplace, or wherever else. Uh, and if you're interested to know if it's possible to build such modules with a builder, then just drop me a message. Drop me a message in Slack, write a comment in, under the, this video, and um, I will try to or make another video explaining how, on particular use cases, how to create a builder applications out of this. Uh, or just will give you an answer there. Let's have a look. Let's have a look and I hope on your participation we'll be really happy to try such way of the in, of the interaction with you. Yes. Then uh, don't forget to subscribe, send to your friend and uh, I wish you all the best and see you in the next videos. Bye.